So this part of the analysis addresses two main research questions. So we want to know if having a developmental disability or having developmental disability status is a predictor of septicemia in Ohio, and do known risk factors of septicemia play a role in the relationship between developmental disabilities and septicemia? And so to address these, I use logistic regression analysis to determine if the following are significant predictors of septicemia. So I looked at age, sex, race, region of residence in Ohio, which I use the Ohio Tourism website to identify the five main regions being Northwest, Northeast, Southwest, Southeast, and Central. And then it's having a developmental disability, having a diagnosis of a respiratory disease, having a catheter, or having a ventilator. Um, and just a few other notes, I divided race into three categories, so it was either white, black, or other. And I originally had region as one variable, but it got split into five different variables. So either yes, you're in this region, or no, you're in that region. And so the process of gathering this data was very similar to what RT did with a few differences. So the sample size ended up being around 109,000 people with DD people and Medicaid people. So it was split about 70, 40. Um, DD and Medicaid. To get the 40,000 Medicaid sample, I use <coughs> random sampling to identify that, and that will play a role later in the analysis. And so the DD population includes waiver and ICF individuals, and we base the diagnosis of sepsis based on primary diagnosis and diagnosis-related groups in Medicaid, and all this data is from 2014. So the first step that I did, I did a univariable analysis of each covariate. So I put in the regression model, sepsis and each covariate individually, to decide if this was a significant covariate. So I set it at a pretty low and easy cut point of 0.2. So if the variable had a chi-square p-value of 0.2 or less, I decided to keep it in the model. If not, I set it aside. And once I made my final model, I added things that I set aside back in to see if it made a difference. So here's the first couple variables. So we see that age, sex, and race were all significant in this analysis, so I decided to keep them into the model. You see the different regions there with their associated p-values. There's a lot more variability there. And southeast ended up being not significant at a level of 0.2, so I set it aside. And then you see that DD, respiratory, catheter, and ventilators we're all significant, so I put them in the model. Um, before moving on to interactions, I then did a multivariate model where everything from here that says keep, I put into a logistic regression model and did backward selection to see if it was significant then. And so I threw out a few of the variables there with a very tight cut point of 0.01. So at 99% confidence, I determined if it should be considered in the model. And so from that, I threw out a couple of the regions and I ended up throwing out sex and race. And in the middle of this analysis, I assessed for confounding. So if the coefficients change greater than 20%, I assumed that there was confounding. Um, but luckily and thankfully, there was none. So that's great. Um, but I did test for interactions, so I tested 20 potential interactions. So this is saying, does one covariate interact with another covariate and change what sepsis looks like together? And so from these 20 potential interactions, only one proved to be significant, and that was between respiratory and age squared. So I also did an analysis to look at, in this model, what is the best way to represent age? And so when you look at the distribution of Medicaid recipients and of people served by DODD, we have a lot more kids than older people. So it's a very sharp slope down when you look at that graphically. And because of that, to fit well into the model, it was best to look at it quadratically, um, which is complicated. And don't ask me questions on that because I will tell you the wrong thing for sure. Um, but it is what it is. And so changing it to quadratic just helps that distribution be a little bit more level. So you'll see later, I noted this interaction as RA. 
meaning respiratory and age. And so in the model, the interaction is significant with the wall test p-value of 0.004, which is really good. So from this, I made some conclusions. So you'll see here that I have explained out some odds ratios. Because of the complex sampling, I was not able to do straight out predicting because I used a random sample in part of the population. And so all these odds ratios control for everything else that's in the model. So I didn't write that on all that because it'd be a lot of words and a lot of me repeating myself. But so the things that we can conclude from this is that the odds of sepsis for an individual with a developmental disability is 1.71 times that of an individual without a developmental disability. And that follows up with what RT said where we saw in the graph that people with a developmental disability had higher risk and they also have significantly higher odds. individual with a catheter is 42.17 times that an individual without a catheter and we don't see odds that high a lot that's very high um next we see that the odds of sepsis for an individual living in northeastern ohio is 1.48 times that an individual living in any other region and so archie showed us that pink map earlier and if you refer back to it in the where are we at in the northeast there was a lot more dark counties represented there. And we see a very similar story for Southwestern Ohio with 1.6 times the odds of an individual living in any other region. So again, in that map, we saw a lot of dark counties in that corner. And based on that interaction, we saw that age modifies the relationship between sepsis and respiratory infection. So across age, we see a trend in sepsis and this is modified by if you have a respiratory infection or not. So as age increases, the rate of sepsis also increases, but it looks differently for someone with a respiratory infection, such as pneumonia versus someone who does not. What can be done to prevent septicemia or sepsis infections? Um, if you are a healthcare professional working with DD individuals, you can be, al you can be alert um, to the signs and symptoms of sepsis and uh, get the person treated as soon as possible because, um, uh, and if you suspect sepsis, um, then you, you, you should get the person treated as soon as per, uh, possible because sepsis is a medical emergency and time matters there. Uh, you can also uh, prevent infections by following infection control practices. Um, ensure that your patients receive recommended vaccines. Um, and then you can also educate your patients and families about preventing infections, taking good care of their chronic conditions, um, and, follow, and to follow good hygiene practices like hand washing, keeping their cuts and wounds uh, clean. Um, 